Hi everyone, welcome back to GCS Easy. Today we'll be delving back into the wonderful world of our immune systems. We'll be exploring how our bodies deal with different pathogens we encounter and the various lines of defense our immune system has at its disposal. So we're gonna be covering how pathogens enter our bodies, our first lines of defense, our second lines of defense, something called phagocytosis, and our third lines of defense, which include things like antibodies and antitoxins. So as always, grab some paper, grab those pens, and follow along with me. Before we can start to think about our body's lines of defense, it's important to understand how pathogens get into our bodies in the first place. Some pathogens hitch a ride inside tiny droplets of saliva and mucus you produce when you cough or sneeze, and sneezes can travel a very long distance. If someone who has a contagious illness, and as we said last lesson, contagious means that it can be spread between people. If that infected person coughs or sneezes into the air near a healthy person, those people are at risk of catching their illness from the pathogens in that snot cloud they just produced. That's why it's important to catch it, bit it, kill it. Pathogens can be found lurking in dirty, stagnant water. The water that comes out of the taps in our houses has the pathogens killed and removed in it in a water treatment station that's probably not too far from your home. If you were to go down to your local pond or river to grab a cool glass of water from there, you just end up with a pathogen smoothie. Pathogens can be passed from person to person by direct contact or more simply put by touching each other. STIs are probably the most well-known group of infectious illnesses that are spread through direct contact. Direct contact would also include being coming infected from picking up pathogens from a surface and transferring it to yourself, either touching a surface then touching your mouth. That's why it's crucial that we wash our hands often during outbreaks of illnesses such as COVID-19. Pathogens can also get into our bodies by hitchhiking on food. Salmonella, for example, can be found in uncooked chicken, but vegetables can also carry pathogens such as listeria. To stop these pathogens getting into you, food should be prepared in clean conditions and cooked thoroughly enough to kill any pathogens that may be lurking within. And while you're at it, wash your hands. The final route some pathogens take is to let another organism do all the work for them. Some diseases are spread by animals, which can then pass that illness on to other animals or even humans. The most famous examples you'll probably have heard of are mosquitoes, which carry the malaria protist in their saliva, fleas, which carry the bacteria that cause th There's also ticks when they bite animals, including humans, to drink their blood, they can also vomit up any pathogens that are in their saliva as well. Lovely. Okay, before we all reach for the disinfectant spray and run furiously to scrub the chicken from tonight's dinner with soapy water, let's get into how our bodies stop us from getting ill. Our bodies have two main types of defences, physical barriers and chemical defences. Physical barriers stop or trap pathogens from entering your body. For example, your skin not only physically stops pathogens from getting into your squishy center, but we shed dead skin cells all the time and take any hitchhiking pathogens with it. Chemical barriers usually involve a substance that's made by the body that can kill or damage pathogens directly. Your stomach acid, for example, is there to kill any pathogens that may be on the food you eat. Let's take a closer look at some examples. Our hair, especially hair on our face, such as eyelashes and nose hair, are there to trap any dust or dirt in the air. Your hairs and your nose are there to sieve out dust, so nothing enters your lungs except air. This dust can carry pathogens on it. Think of your nostrils as two built-in air purifiers. As well as having hair, our ears also produce wax, This lovely sticky earwax is there to trap pathogens, dirt and other small objects. Another chemical defence at our disposal are tears and saliva. Yes, that's right, your spit and tears can actually kill pathogens thanks to the antibacterial substances in them called lysosomes. So next time you get a paper cut, don't put those tears to waste. Cry into your cut, you'll feel better in no time, probably. Speaking of paper cuts, when we do get a cut, we don't simply bleed to death, your body forms a scab to plug up the leak. Your scabs have a second role, however, as they also stop pathogens from getting in. 
Once a pathogen enters your bloodstream, it basically has entered the express way to infectionsville and can potentially infect any part of the body it ends up in. So forming scabs is vital in stopping infection. Think about that next time you pick a scab. And if you never pick the scab, all I can say is stop lying. The other function is to kill any pathogens that may have gone into your stomach and your food and drink. There's not many pathogens out there that can survive a pH 2 acid bath for two and a half to three hours. The last defense we'll look at is another physical barrier, mucus. Mucus, aka snot or bogies, are another sticky substance made to trap pathogens, dust and other substances like pollen in the air we breathe. Paired with our nasal hair filtration system, you can trap a lot of pathogens. Even grosser version of snot, phlegm, is also used to trap and move dust and pathogens that are in your airways. The cells in our trachea, or our windpipe, have tiny structures called cilia, which waft mucus up and into your throat. The mucus then either gets swallowed and dunked into the acid bath, or you spit it out like some kind of animal, hopefully into a tissue. If any pathogen manages to slip past our first lines of defense, our immune system needs to work quickly to get rid of it before it can rapidly reproduce and make you unwell. Our second lines of defense are taken care of by our white blood cells or leukocytes as they're more scientifically called. There are two groups that you need to know about at this stage in your scientific training, phagocytes and lymphocytes. Phagocytes are a type of white blood cell that kills pathogens by engulfing them and then destroying them. The name actually tells you this as phago means to consume and site means cell. So phagocytes are cells that consume pathogens. When our white blood cells come across a pathogen and recognize that it doesn't belong in our body, phagocytes get to work. They stretch their cell membrane around the pathogen a bit like a big hug of death and pull it inside the white blood cell. Once it's inside the cell, it's then killed and destroyed. Phagocytes are an example of non-specific defenses. These are defenses which don't target anything in particular, but rather shoot first and ask questions later, and attempt to destroy anything in your body that does not belong there. This cleanup crew can have a huge impact on the number of invading pathogens, as you have around 30 million phagocytes in your body, and they are all ready to kill anything that might make you unwell. That's one heck of a security team. Before we explore how antibodies and antigens work specifically, we need to get a few bits of vocabulary into our brains. Antigens are protein markers. Think of them like tiny name tags on the outside of a cell. These antigen name tags tell your immune system if a cell it comes across is one of yours or not. Each pathogen also has its own unique antigen. Your immune system uses this information to fight any pathogen you may encounter and keep a record of each pathogen for future use. Antigens are really complicated when you start delving into them, which also makes them really interesting. But an easy way to remember them is pathogens have antigens. Antibodies, on the other hand, are made by white blood cells in your body. We'll go into them in a bit more detail later, but for now, just remember that your body makes antibodies. Antitoxins are another substance your white blood cells make, which counteract any toxins that bacteria make when they're infecting you. Antitoxins counteract toxins. The second type of white blood cells we're gonna look at are lymphocytes, which are part of our specific immune system. The specific immune system targets and goes after each kind of pathogen you may encounter and makes substances that counteract and kill them. Unlike phagocytes, which target anything that it doesn't recognize, lymphocytes make substances that match the pathogen they're attacking. Even more impressively, they also remember all the pathogens that have ever made you ill. Let's take a closer look at the role of these lymphocytes then, and what antibodies and antitoxins do to fight infection. When a pathogen enters your body via one of the methods we looked at earlier, any white blood cells that come across it are gonna try and work out what it is and if it belongs there using the antigens on its surface. Antigens are just little markers made of protein that are on the surface of all cells and the antigens for your body match you. Antigens on the surface of a bacteria, for example, won't match you. So if the antigens on the surface of a cell don't match the ones in your body, your white blood cells are gonna seek and destroy. Any phagocytes that engulf and destroy the invaded pathogen keep hold of the antigens and show them to any nearby lymphocytes. 
Your immune system has a memory of sorts of all the pathogens it's come across. So it checks if the invading pathogen is something brand new or if it's something that's infected you before. If the lymphocyte doesn't recognize the pathogen, meaning it's never infected you before, it triggers the immune response. This can cause a few things to happen. Firstly, white blood cells begin to make antibodies. These are structures that have a Y shape and have areas on them that match the shape of the antigen of whatever pathogen is infecting you, fitting together like puzzle pieces. However, because the shape of the antibody has to be an exact match to the antigen, each antibody only works on one strain, which is a type of pathogen only. Every pathogen has a slightly different antigen, so making an antibody to match can take a few hours to a few days. This is the time when you feel unwell from your illness. Because pathogens reproduce so quickly, their antigens can change due to changes in their DNA called mutations. So the original antibodies that your immune system made to counteract it won't match anymore. This explains why you can get a common cold more than once, as the virus that causes it, rhinovirus, changes its antigens frequently, so it can reinfect you. Once a matching antibody has been made, white blood cells start producing it quickly and attack the invading pathogen. Antibodies stick pathogens together, or can even damage the pathogens themselves. By sticking pathogens together, it makes it much harder for them to move and reproduce, which also makes it easier for your phagocyte security force to come and destroy them. Finally, next time the same pathogen makes it into your body, your white blood cells will quickly recognize the invader's antigens and spring into action much faster. More antibodies will be made at a faster rate. So fast, in fact, that your immune system can stop the infection without you even knowing the pathogen was there at all. Well done, you clever little white blood cells. The last trick your white blood cells have up their cellular sleeves is antitoxin. When bacteria cause infection, they give off toxins as they feed and compete with each other. These toxins, unfortunately, are poisonous to us. What our white blood cells do is produce antitoxins. These substances neutralize or cancel out the toxins, stopping you from being poisoned. All right then, ladies, gents, and those beyond the binary, that's our immune system and the wonderful defenses it has in place to keep us as fit and healthy as we will let it. Who knew you had so many things going on inside your body? In terms of what you need to take away from this lesson, make sure you are confident that you can do the following. Treat those points as exam questions if you want a challenge, then go back through the video and see what you got right. Hope you got a new sense of respect for your body, especially the security team that is your immune system. Despite what we put it through sometimes, our immune system will be there to protect us from infection as well as it can. Thank you, immune system. See you next time.